Everybody knows Australia. They know it as a holiday destination. They know it as somewhere to go for a day at the beach and a barbecue. But I guess they hadn't really appreciated that we were capable of something so impactful. To hear people talking to me about how it affected them and how they could see the potential for their own patients in another country, in another hemisphere, was something I guess I hadn't prepared for. <laughs> Plastic and reconstructive surgery is referred to as the problem-solving specialty. These are complex problems for which there's no textbook answer. The ideal thing to do is to replace like with like. So I've been working with a group using additive manufacturing techniques in long segment bone defects in sheep. It's a method that involves depositing small amounts of the given material in three-dimensional space. They were getting good healing of the bone at the ends, but poor quality bone in the middle. In fact, often no bone at all. I then had the idea that perhaps instead of stripping off the lining of the bone and throwing it away, we could use it within the implant to bridge the gap. The very next round of sheep studies, we produced a six centimetre defect and it was about 80% the strength of entirely normal unwounded bone. Suddenly you realise that you're onto something. Then of course, the next step is, well, let's find a patient to do this in. And uh, I guess that patient came along a little bit more quickly than what we had anticipated. Reuben was in a terrible position where he'd had an infection throughout almost the entire length of the bone, some 36 centimetres, uh, which rendered the limb essentially useless. Standard of care for this particular problem, of course, is an amputation. But in this instance, because there was so little bone available, it would have to have been an above knee amputation. Reuben presented us with an opportunity to perform genuine world first surgery in the hope that it might save his leg. The largest long segment bone reconstruction that had been successfully performed prior to that was 12 to 15 centimetres, and here we were at least double that. We were confident that we could actually make this happen, but no one had tried this before. Nothing happened for nine months. And I can tell you that was an agonizing nine months. But then we started to see the bone forming inside the implant. And that was epic. The obvious question is, so when can I walk on it, doc? Uh, and the answer is, I have no idea. I fully expected to hear a crack and to see him fall over on a bent, broken leg. At about 18 months, the smile comes when he realises he's actually walking again on his own leg and he's gone on to live life. So, bone is one thing. Organs are much more complicated. When you've had a transplant, you have to have medication to suppress your own immune system. In fact, the thing that kills most kidney transplant patients is, would you believe, skin cancer. So, the idea that we should be trying to develop something that is more innately belonging to that human being is really, really important and a very worthwhile thing to do. I would love to see a world in which something with cancer gets taken away and replaced with something that is that patient's own tissue. Now that's the objective here, is to replace truly like with like. I look back often at the video footage of Ruben taking his first steps. There's no amount of money or fame that can buy that feeling. We're not doing it because it makes us money. We're not doing it because it makes us famous. We're doing it because it changes the life of one person at a time.